So yeah, I knew family law wasn't for me, but it, there is sometimes some, you know, some really juicy tea between people. Woo. What's up you guys? It's your girl Angela with The Aspiring Boss. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about different practice areas of law, okay? So I've noticed that a lot of my subscribers are either in law school or are aspiring lawyers still in high school or still in college. And one thing that I've realized, and this was me as well, that as an aspiring lawyer, sometimes you don't even know exactly what that entails, right? Like you know you want to be a lawyer, but before you go to law school, before you get exposure to different types of law, you kind of don't really know all the types of law that there is because you guys, there's so many different types of law, like so, so, so many. So today I'm gonna be touching on just a variety of different practice areas of law. And by no means is this list comprehensive, by no means am I gonna be able to go over every different type of law, but I am just gonna go through about 15 to 20 different types of law. We'll see how many I come up with, but um, just a disclaimer, I'm not gonna go into much detail because there are so many and obviously I only practice you know one type of law so I can't speak to everything I just can give a general overview and if something clicks for you and that feels like something you might want to do then I encourage you all to go do your research on that type of law and see if you can get exposure to it and really understand what it is so when you go to law school or when you graduate you will know exactly what type of job that you are looking to get so like I said, it's a long list, so I'm gonna go through them quickly. By no means am I claiming to know everything about what these types of lawyers do. I'm just trying to give you guys a general overview, just in case something piques your interest and you can go explore on your own. So let's jump right in. So the first type of law I'm gonna talk about, of course, is business corporate law. And obviously, if you guys have been on my channel, you know that I practice transactional business corporate law. You know, there's different names for it, but Essentially, I practice transactional corporate law. Just like with all the practice areas I'm gonna talk about, there is a multitude of subsections under business law, right? But essentially, corporate law relates to rules and regulations for business entities. So essentially, corporate business lawyers assist clients who are businesses with running the legal aspect of their business. Like I said, there's so many subsections and you know, you got your day-to-day -day general corporate work with respect to helping clients draft contracts, negotiate contracts, draft employment agreements for their employees. Um, what I do, mergers and acquisitions, sell their company, buy their company, buy assets of another company, sell some assets of their company. There's so many routes you can go under business law, right? But if you're the type of person who feels like you really don't want to be in court, you really don't want to be drafting motions and reading briefs and things like that, you'd rather be, you know, helping businesses operate and advising businesses, you might want to look into, you know, business law, okay? All right, so next type of practice bankruptcy law so bankruptcy lawyers do exactly what it sounds like bankruptcy lawyers represent clients as they're navigating the process of going through bankruptcy and this could be an individual or it could be a business as some of you may or may not know bankruptcy is a legal proceeding in which an individual or a business is basically unable to repay the debts that they owe to creditors so a bankruptcy court will help these businesses or individuals evaluate their assets and figure out how to repay their creditors. So basically bankruptcy lawyers help with that. I've actually had a little bit of experience with bankruptcy law just a tad. I just helped on some due diligence and things like that in a couple of transactions throughout my career. It's definitely not for me, but I will say that bankruptcy lawyers come in handy in times like this, in times like 2008, and you always need a good bankruptcy lawyer. All right, so this next one is huge, just like business law, civil litigation. When I say civil civil litigation that is such a broad category so many different subsections or practice areas go under civil litigation basically the best way to describe civil litigation is court disputes that are not related to you know criminal law so in civil litigation you're gonna have a lawsuit between you know two or more parties where one or more parties will be the plaintiff and the other party or parties will be the defendant so the plaintiffs sue the defendant for 
um, some sort of injury or harm that they've alleged has been caused by the defendant. And um, they are suing for some sort of damages, usually money. Um, and so, like I said, there's so many different types of law under civil litigation. Just to name a few, you think of contract disputes, you know, you think of landlord tenant issues, you know, if you're trying to evict your tenant or, you know, if somebody hits you with their car or you guys got in a car accident and you're hurt and you want to sue them. So really, it really individuals or businesses suing each other where no crime, no actual crime is involved. All right, so the next type of attorney is a civil rights attorney. And honestly, they do just like it sounds. They spend their time advocating for people's civil rights in areas such as, you know, human rights, equality rights, social justice, cases of discrimination, you know, gender discrimination, race discrimination. As you guys know, there are laws put in place to protect people no matter what you, you know, your race, age, sex, or anything like that is. When a person's civil rights have been violated, civil rights lawyers will come in and advocate uh, for people, you know, on their rights. So an example would be, you know, any kind of discrimination claim, um, say you have been, you know, discriminated against because of your age, you know, ageism. A civil rights lawyer will advocate on your behalf because you've been discriminated against because of your age. I definitely um, tip my hat off to any civil rights lawyers because you are very much needed and very much appreciated. All right, the next one is criminal law. So I feel like this is the type of law that most people are familiar with just because it's portrayed so much on TV. But when I think of criminal law, I think of two different types of lawyers. The first would be uh, criminal lawyers who work for the government, whether that be in the capacity of a prosecutor or a district attorney. And those would be the people that are charging criminals with, you know, a crime and trying to get you know, justice for whatever victim and put people behind bars. And the other type of government lawyer would be the public defenders. You know, everyone has a right to a lawyer if they can afford to get one on their own. And so th those are the people who would defend the people who are being charged with the crime. The other type would be, you know, people who work for themselves and they, they're not associated with the government and they're just really criminal defense lawyers. Those are the people that, you know, if you don't want a public defender, you want, you know, someone who you think will really advocate for your rights, you go to them to defend you for or any crime you've been charged with, whether that be, you know, murder, robbery, drug crime, DUI, anything like that. That's what you would go to a criminal defense attorney for. The other thing to mention about criminal law is a lot of criminal defense lawyers will niche down in the type of crimes that they defend. There's people out there who only do murder cases. They only defend people who've been charged with murder. There's people out there who only do DWIs. Like that is their niche. So some people will do a range of things and some people will niche down to just one type and like that become their thing. All right, the next type of lawyer is entertainment lawyer, which is funny because I used to think I wanted to be an entertainment lawyer until I realized how much intellectual property law was involved in that. And then I realized you probably need to live in like California, New York. And so, yeah, that, that dream quickly faded. But entertainment lawyers are lawyers who assist people in the entertainment industry. Think actresses, singers, uh, you know, sports players. And they assist them with legal matters, you know, pertaining to the entertainment industry. Now, entertainment lawyers can be transactional lawyers or litigators, or they can do both. So on the transactional side, you think negotiating and preparing contracts, uh, you think helping with marketing and branding deals, you know, advertising deals, things like that. And obviously as a litigator, you know, if you've been sued, you know, for copyright or something like that, obviously they will help you with that as well. One thing that I think is less widely known when people think of entertainment lawyers, like outside of the lawyer community, is intellectual property is a huge component of being an entertainment lawyer. You should know your intellectual property law if you're going to be an entertainment lawyer because entertainment lawyers will help their clients with things like, you know, trademarks, copyright, making sure the client isn't infringing on someone else's trademark or someone else's copyright and things like that. So you think of singers and, and songs and things that you like even here on YouTube. Like one of my last videos, I had to take it down and redo it because I was playing Nipsey Hussle in the background and as soon as I uploaded it, YouTube notified me that somebody had claimed that, that that music was copyrighted and you know, if I were to keep it on my channel, they could make money off of it. If I would have made money off of it, they would be entitled to, you know, a piece of that money because they own the music. So, so I say all that to say that intellectual property law is really, really important in the entertainment law industry. So while we're on intellectual property law, we can just switch on to, you know, a full blown intellectual property lawyer. Intellectual property law is similar to most of the different types of law I've been talking about where intellectual property lawyers can either go the transactional route or the litigation route 
or they can do both. I feel like a lot of them do quasi because it crosses over to you know litigation and transactional because intellectual property lawyers are going to help people and businesses protect their brands you know you think of nike you can't just you know print a shirt with the nike sign on it because nike has that protected you know under intellectual property laws all right so next type of law is family law family lawyers are going to be the people who represent people in family related issues so you think divorce child custody child support alimony prenups you know those types of things that's what a family lawyer is going to help you do and actually i actually have a little bit of experience with family law my 2 year i did a spring internship at a family law firm and it was interesting i knew it wasn't for me um because it was just too much drama like the due diligence like uh or whatever you call it on the litigation side i think they call it doc review and transactional side you call it due diligence but reading through you know text from the mom versus the dad and you know you know two people trying to get custody and so they're trying to bring out the worst of the, uh, the other it just wasn't my thing and the, there's actually a saying within the legal community like if you practice family law you get the worst of people be, like they're on the worst behavior than the ugliest because you know it's a really contentious space where you know two people are getting divorced they have kids and both sides want custody neither side wants to pay you know child support or whatever so you just get the worst of people and they say in criminal law, you get the best of people because people are on their best behavior. They're putting their best foot forward because they don't want to go to jail. So, yeah, I knew family law wasn't for me. But it, there is sometimes some, you know, some really juicy tea between people. Woo! But moving on. The next type of lawyer I'm going to talk about is env an environmental lawyer. Environmental lawyers basically work on behalf of their clients to ensure that environmental related laws are being complied with so when you think of environmental you think of like you know the clean water act protecting endangered species global warming sustainability you know uh dealing with waste and trash and recycling and things like that additionally though there is there are some environmental lawyers who i feel like work in more of a like non profit type of area where they are advocating to enact and put into place laws and regulations that protect the environment so those same issues but the laws aren't there yet to enforce they're trying to advocate to have these laws put in place to protect the environment all right the next type of law is labor and employment law so labor and employment law relates to matters and issues you know between employers and employees as you guys know so under la labor employment issues you know the compensation discrimination sexual harassment if they're not giving your benefits dealing with unions and things like that essentially as an employment lawyer you will either represent the employee who feels like they've been wronged by the employer like say for example you know the ceo sexually harassed someone and they want to sue them or they're not being paid overtime you know in accordance with labor laws you would represent the employee in suing the employer and then you have lawyers who work on behalf of the employer so employers you know are defending themselves from the claims against the employee because they're not true so the next type of law is personal injury law and honestly personal injury falls under the civil litigation bucket because it is you know one person suing another i thought it made sense to touch on it a little bit briefly just because it's such a big aspect of law when you think of personal injury you know think of those commercials where you know have you been hit by a truck or have you been harmed by so and so so basically with personal injury one party will sue another party because they feel they have a claim because that party has injured them in some way whether that be physically emotionally or mentally yes it's not just physical you can sue somebody who caused you emotional or uh mental damage as well so when i think of personal injury i like the main ones i think of are car accidents um slip and fall like in the grocery store and wrongful death like all right the next category is real estate law and i've actually had some experience in real estate law i've started my career doing real estate law and as an M&A lawyer, it's, it's a part of my practice, but I'm not a real estate lawyer. There are so many things that fall under real estate. First, you got to separate residential and commercial. Residential deals more with, you know, houses and commercial is more with, you know, business spaces. So, but real estate basically involves everything related to land and property. Uh, some of the types of things real estate lawyers will do on the transactional side, draft leases, uh, draft documents, draft contracts for people to purchase or sell real estate on the litigation side if there's a matter between you know landlord tenant there's an, a subsection of real estate where they're a real estate finance lawyer so they help with the lending part of purchasing property so all right next type of lawyer is a tax lawyer a tax lawyer is obviously going to specialize in tax law and you guys oh my god as a transactional lawyer 
Tax lawyers are a gift from God. They are so important to transactions. Tax lawyers can represent individuals or they can represent companies. I, When I work with tax lawyers, it's more in a company space because obviously I'm a transactional business lawyer. But essentially tax attorneys are going to assist individuals and businesses in coming up with ways to avoid or ease their tax burden. We all, nobody wants to pay taxes. Um, we all know the tax code is like a cheat code and if you know the tax code, you can structure things to ease your tax burden. So a good tax attorney will help you do that. So some tax attorneys will also help individuals who are in trouble with their taxes, you know, with the IRS and stuff like that. So like I said, there's a variety of things that tax lawyers do, but one thing I do know is they're super important. All right, the next type of lawyer is a banking and finance lawyer. And along with real estate, I did have experience with this starting my career. I don't do much lending work or anything like that anymore, but I do get exposure to it just given my general kind of corporate m a practice a banking and finance lawyer is going to assist lenders and borrowers with you know arranging the whole loan transaction lending process as with every category that i mentioned there's so many subsections some of the things that they might do is like draft the actual loan agreement and security agreement and just the loan documents that go into a loan transaction when a bank is lending money to a person or a company you know there's going to be a loan agreement there's going to be usually be a security agreement there's going to be a bunch of ancillary documents you know to complete the whole lending transaction and so a lending a banking and finance attorney will help with that some banking and finance attorneys also help banks with compliance as you guys know you know there's a bunch of laws related to lending and banks are held to certain standards that they have to comply with laws change banking and finance lawyers will make sure that a bank's policies procedures practices documents are in compliance with banking and lending laws. All right, the next type of attorney is an estate planning attorney. So an estate planning attorney will assist clients with estate planning matters. They will help you plan for things in instances where you know you die or you become incapacitated. They will help you plan for that. So you know your money, your assets, everything goes to the people that you want it to go in the manner that you want it to go. They will draft documents such as wills, trusts, powers of attorneys and other you know estate planning related documents like that i feel like the most important role that estate planning lawyers play is they help you figure out how to distribute your assets you know after death or when you become incapacitated in a tax advantaged way right everyone knows that the irs is coming for the coins you know even if you die they're gonna come for your beneficiaries coins right so okay so say you just leave a bunch of money you leave millions of dollars, a million dollars worth of assets to your daughter when you die. Well, if you don't have that structured in a tax advantage way because you consulted with a good estate planning attorney, your daughter is going to face some tax burdens for that. And so I think that's probably the biggest edge they got is they will help you distribute um, your wealth and your assets in a tax advantage way. And even if you don't have a bunch of money, it's still important to work with an estate planning attorney because if you, no matter what you got, if it's a little bit or a lot, you want to make sure it goes to, you know, who you want it to go to and you don't want your family fighting and things like that, you know, when you die. All right. The last type of law I'm going to talk about today is immigration law. Immigration law, of course, like everything has a wide range of sub practices, but essentially immigration lawyers are going to help people just with that. They're going to help people with attaining citizenship, attaining work visas, attaining student visa they're going to help prevent people from getting deported and also they're going to help employers who are trying to hi hire people who aren't citizens and and help um employers comply with the laws related to that uh because there is a process for that if you are an employer and you're hiring employees there is a process for hiring people who are not citizens you know at least here in the united states so i feel like i just said a mouthful and like i said i try to go really short and really quick so i can get through a lot of different types of law the purpose of this video was just to give you a little bit of information about several types of practices of law just in case something piques your interest and you can go chase and seek more information about that type of law maybe try to get an internship maybe try to you know have an informational session with someone who practices that type of law so you can start thinking about what type of law you want to do because i will tell you if you're not in law school yet and you get to law school it's not going to be just some magic that clicks you're going to have to you're going to have to talk to people well for most people some people are like i know i want to be a litigator but for a lot of people you you there's no way for you to know except to do your research to talk to people who do it and to get experience so with that go do your research i hope this video was helpful if you made it all the way through that means you did like the video so go ahead and give me a like go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed i'm not really sure what you're waiting on but today is the day 
and make sure you have that notification bell on so you get notified every time I upload a video. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.